hello. My name is Sonja Bäume. And uh, I'm very happy to present you today my thesis project, which is called Invisible Membrane, Life on the Human Body and its Design Application. So um, I started my project with my fascination for uh, the borderline in between the outside and the inside, our skin. And on our skin, we have a second layer, which is a layer full of life. Um, our body does not end with, uh, with our skin. It's actually continuously and invisibly expanding into space. And so our body has this invisible membrane and it's constantly exchanging and adapting through the environment via bacteria. And bacteria, that's actually a bacteria of my, uh, bacteria population of my left shoulder. And <laughs> bacteria um, react in a very, um, or they are very important in and out on our body. They, they keep us alive. So our body is uh, also surrounded by a second visible layer, and this layer is closing. Closing um, is the most direct means with the, um, of communication with the surroundings, and these surroundings are determined by social environment and by natural circumstances. And I think when we have a closer look to these um, circumstances, we can react in a more individual and flexible way. So what if we combine or interlink the layer of life on our skin uh, with a living material on our skin? Uh, my design uh, exists of uh, four projects and they emerged uh, through, um, through the process. So this is my first project, which is called Crocheted Membrane. It was actually my first research and design step. So I asked myself the question if we could make use of our skin bacteria or the knowledge they have about our inval body and um, related to temperature. So um, if they could grow and morph a structure on, on our skin. So um, the material would build up on, on areas where it's uh, better on cold body areas and would uh, build less material and less warmth areas. I met uh, a lot of uh, different scientists and told them about <laughs> my vision. And my way brought me to the Wagen University where I did an internship in the microbiology lab and I learned how to identify bacteria, how to classify them, I learned how they grow and I understood a very important point that uh, bacteria populations adapt individually. So uh, my next question arised, what happens if we make the micro-world of our human body perceivable? Out of that came my second design and um, this is actually a part of my body growing and for me, it was very, um, yeah, very weird also to, to see my body growing, actually uh, separated of, uh, of my living organism. And uh, it made me think a lot about our body awareness. And we all know that uh, bacteria can cause diseases, but it's interesting that most of the bacteria are uh, harmless and even beneficial. So when actually did we determine bacteria something bad? After I learned all the microbiology uh, or the scientific language, the microbiology tools and how to deal with microorganisms, I started my experiments with uh, textile and bacteria. And I got very good results and one also showed me that bacteria react to textile. And out of that came my, um, my third design, which is called Visible Membrane Number One. And it's a, a life-size body um, surrounded or needed sur uh, by, by wool. And it's breaking apart of the wool layer way in a way to, yeah, to re-look on our skin or to uh, re-evaluate and seeing uh, the, the possibilities this already uh, existing infrastructure can have. Mm, so how could the visible membrane work? I believe that um, the, we, when we have the knowledge uh, of our skin bacteria, which means that uh, since the last decade, the microbiologist knows that uh, bacteria communicate through molecules. So these molecules could be sent to, uh, to a film. It's a communication layer and it's represented in my work um, with textiles, but I think in the future it could be a film which uh, responds to our individual body needs. Then the third layer, which is a slime mold, and is, as far as I know, the only existing um, organism which uh, reacts flexible to environmental change. And the last layer plans to visualize um, climate change and also to, to lead to new material properties. 
So the symbiosis of fashion and science. Um, I think there is going on a disconnection in the world of fashion uh, and, and uh, the people's need. I, uh, I think clothing do not celebrate the individual social body or individual physical body. I think uh, they're celebrating the conformity of fashion. So I think we could react in a more individual and flexible way. And uh, fashion, fashion is a visual language. Science is a language of uh, facts and data. So fashion can give science uh, visualization. And science can give fashion uh, content, scientific uh, techniques and uh, data. To come to my, uh, to my conclusion, um, so what would change for us? Would, for instance, um, yeah, would, would, would our interaction between humans uh, change to the, adaption, um, uh, to the adaption of our second skin to the environment? And would, for instance, social integration uh, be possible um, better through the, through the adaption to the aesthetical and functional adaption of our second skin. Um, in my work, I want, to, I want to create awareness that our body is a, a large host of bacteria. And I, I believe when we have, first of all, a consciousness of our body, then an authentic local adaption could perhaps refer to, um, uh, to, to a, a local local cultural community, and this could lead to, to close this more meaning. And as my last design, I want to show you my, um, uh, my film, which is called Invisible.
Thank you for your attention.